Good morning, everyone. I've just noticed this is the new branding. Uh, welcome back to Adobe Live. Um, this is my first time back on Adobe Live hosting uh, for a few weeks, I think. And uh, yeah, we got the new branding. Um, and also uh, today for a very special Monday morning, we are joined with uh, Jai Lu. So we're going to be uh, talking all things illustration, I believe. Um, welcome. Please introduce yourself and uh, a little bit about what you are and what you are. I mean, <laughs> who you are and what you do. <laughs> um, hi, Joe and everyone. I am a human. <laughs> um, I'm also an illustrator. I was born in Taiwan, but right now I live in London. Um, my work, I mainly specialize in editorial and some other random bits and pieces, but I'm mainly known for my landscapes and uh, cute animals on Instagram. <laughs> Very lovely. Taiwan is one of my favorite places in the world. I absolutely loved it. I've only spent collectively about three days in Taipei um, and it was kind of top of my list for a long time of uh, top sort of three travel destinations to go to um, along with, before anyone asks, um, I had Canada on the list and New Zealand and uh, yeah, Taiwan, it just captured my heart so much so humble and special um and uh and beautiful and of course taipei 101 i mean what a building so good oh my god even though i'm very scared of heights i do try and go up there every once in a while but um yeah did you go in the summer or did you go uh i went in april of two years ago now it only feels <laughs> like a year ago uh because obviously we we've, we've pretty much lost a year um yeah. but uh yeah it was uh it was rainy, but I enjoyed it. Um, unlike the rain that we've got here in London, um, which, uh, as we were just discussing beforehand, is a little bit miserable. Um, so, uh, yeah, welcome everyone to Adobe Live. If you're currently watching on YouTube, that's fine. You can hang out there and, and enjoy this. Uh, but if you want to join in with the chat, and we've got a number of people in the chat already, um, we can uh, have that on Behance. So head over to behance.net slash live, I believe it is. And um, yeah, there's a, a number of people in here and I think we're all quite eager um, to see some of your work and um, your uh, your Instagram has quite a, an aesthetic with um, uh, great sort of visuals and um, it's got a very like a homely, uh, it's just a, a warming character nature. Um, I really, really enjoy your style and things. So um, yeah, hopefully we can uh, have a look through your portfolio and see some work. Amazing. Thanks, Joe. Um, wait, so let me get the portfolio up. So this is this is my website, but it's probably the easiest way to see a collection of my work. Um, if I explain a little bit about this header, actually, um, mm -hmm. it was kind of self self initiated a bit of personal work just before I graduated uni. Um, and it's kind of the piece that started off this whole Kind of sharp geometric angular look for me um it it was an experiment really to see if i could blend the four seasons into one image um because i've always loved playing around color and landscapes is such a kind of accessible topic it's not like you're yeah. imagining outer space or something like that and it's, i guess it's something that we've we've all got a personal experience and connection to so it's right. relatable definitely exactly and at that time i was this, i was post uni so i didn't have enough money to travel <laughs> yeah i was like you know what if i wanted to go anywhere let's just draw it instead which i suppose is kind of the same now with covid yeah no that's a that's a great approach i mean likewise you can also draw the places that don't even exist and um you know pitch exactly. that to city developers and say hey here's an idea 
Let's exactly. build this place. <laughs> I mean, that's that's why I also really love drawing landscapes because you can kind of create whatever place. Like, you want a castle mm. in the middle of the sea? Go for it. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but the so this uh, is the the Four Seasons um, as yeah. a as a sort of collection of images. Exactly. Is that always, uh, so obviously we're seeing the end output here on, and I know we're just at the header image, um, yeah. but is this something that came up as like a, an idea of, I want to start with a four season, or did you, you know, change your mind halfway through and think, oh, you know what, maybe I want to draw the summer instead of the winter? It was kind of, I think you're right, yeah, I was halfway drawing, like the, the trees came first and then I did the willow and I was like, oh. You know what this would be really cool if i could draw a little bit of like a snow and a hut but huts look so much better in snow than they mm. do in just grassland and that's how it kind of came about and i re-sketched and went back and re-sketched and dropped it mm -hmm. back into photoshop which is one of the benefits of working digitally yeah um, yeah you can push and pull and change direction anytime you like yeah um but this whole blending kind of making landscapes blend into one sort of led me into there's there's quite a few of where I blend landscapes so they've got if I open up bird note which is a podcast a podcast actually um oh, did not attempt to check my internet connection there we go <laughs> um so the concept for bird note is it's a podcast full of bird sounds <laughs> from different landscapes and places and the art director wanted a blend of all the places that were going through the podcast so you've got the jungle to the desert and you just wanted to like blend them all into one uh, nice. i see a, a reference set of uh sony oh, what are they mdx tim you might know this uh in my ear sony headphones they, these are hi-fi good quality um that's uh that's the nerdy in in me that's uh that's recognizing that um i'm sure there are some uh some bird spotters who will recognize um some particular ones i think the only bird i can recognize there is and i'm probably going to get this wrong is it in the top right is that a toucan it is a toucan to be honest i don't quite remember either so it's fine <laughs> <laughs> um but i'm glad you noticed the headphones it was a special request from their sound engineer and they really wanted it in the artwork and i was like, okay i will do this what? for you <laughs> There we go. Yeah. No, they um, um they're a great set of headphones. Uh, if you're into audio editing, very affordable as well. Oh, yeah. I mean, I feel like I need to upgrade for my free Sony Ericsson headphones from 10 years <laughs> ago. Um, but yeah, if I show actually one more. So this project was with Nexus Studios in London. Um, okay. The art director there was super super nice and um i was really nervous working with them actually because the timeline was a little bit tight mm. so the i did not realize this but when you have a landscape a continuous rolling landscape like this it's very easy to animate for any animators out there because it's kind of like just a very technical you just kind of pan like this in yep. order to move across the landscape um so the idea was a tree going through four seasons. So you go from, you know, whatever season you want to start first, and you can see the tree transforming throughout the different stages. And uh, they animated it, which looked absolutely spectacular at the end. So the whole entire concertina looked like this after. We've already got mention in the chat uh, from Gareth recognizing it as a storyboard. Um, I know there's a, a little bit of a delay between when we're chatting and when this goes live, and I imagine that was probably sent right as you said. It's pretty easy to animate a, uh, a wide landscape like this. Um, yeah. yeah, so the uh, so this is a, a single tree going through all the seasons, and you mentioned it, Constantina. How so? How was it animated? It was good question i wish i had some of the little processes but they basically the the tree and the animals and the background were animated in three different steps and the background itself had a um oh i forgot the word but it's it's kind of lit parallax there we go had like okay. a almost parallax effect between kind of the mountains because how flat my style is you kind mm. of need that kind of parallax to do the whole depth um yeah 
So, so we break I it can... apart and give it some some life and things. Yeah. So if they move, you can kind of see oh, yeah, the landscape going that way and the tree moving in a different direction to kind of spin and transform. Mm -hmm. Which is very cool. Um, mm. Because you say the... this was a agency you worked with, so they handled all the animation and, and things like that. Yeah, all I had to do was not mess up my file names and package them nicely. So, <laughs> <laughs> the engineer has it inspired didn't... you to um, to get involved with trying some animation out at all? To be honest, it's what I what they taught me is probably that I need to go to back to school in order to animate like them. <laughs> I did I did try out some blinking lights and making some animations for friends and family, but mm. I have a whole level of respect for people who can especially make my animations, which are in their nature, very flat, move in a 3D way like that. Well, I, I can imagine from a from an animator's perspective, getting assets as beautiful as this, and if you have layered them and named them correctly, you'll make them endlessly happy. Um, but having great work like this to start with, it's just a dream. Like it, it's such a an easy place to to sort of start with and work with. And I would encourage you if you wanted to check out um, some After Effects things. I think it it might be surprisingly easy to get involved with, especially if you've got knowledge and experience with Photoshop. Um, it's a bit daunting and intimidating, but beyond the first couple of hours or so, um, I think you'd be flying with this. Well, thank you. I hope so. I used to work with an animator who tried to teach me After Effects. But it's a very scary interface, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Um, but maybe one day, I think, if oh, if there's another lockdown. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Um. So that that's the whole part of the landscapes. But apart from those jobs which are absolutely dream jobs to be honest the one with emphasis it was a dream job to animate a beautiful tree you, you don't get those very very often yeah. um the more likelihood that i've been illustrating is kind of editorials um i'm not one of those who's like a noma bar and very conceptual <laughs> i normally go for the uh kind of beautiful aesthetics and trying to stack concepts into one image beautifully and i feel like mm -hmm. that's the side of illustration that doesn't um get enough kind of not credit but celebration yeah um, i i know what you mean I, I used to feel the same when um so my background was in graphic design and sometimes when when sort of piecing things together and just you know building artwork for stuff there's always this underlying push on communication and, you know, what is it trying to say and stuff. But when I was really just starting out and just learning things, I used to get so hung up on what the message was that I wouldn't make things. And then as soon as I, I try to, you know, remove that from my mind and say, like, let's just make something that looks nice, that looks great. And then from there, you start to then find out what your message actually is that you're trying to say. Um, it's just, yeah, it, it's... It sounds like it's uh, against all rules and laws of art, um, but at times you just want to make things that look nice, right? Right. Thank you, Joe. Um, yeah, you're completely right. I agree. You, because you're taught, you're taught like to be creative, you must have some amazing concept, and if you don't have that, you think, oh, then I can't, I can't do this. This is a bad job. But if you work like from make something that you'll enjoy, it mm -hmm. often comes a lot easier to you and you know clever ideas and and compositions are absolutely key but there's also other ways of communicating emotion and mm -hmm. concepts like there's color there's different compositions you know um yeah, that's true that you can always convey a certain concept mm. and um, emotion is definitely something that can't really be be taught as such it's only something that's felt and it's felt when you're creating it and it's felt when you're viewing it um, and if you if you try and focus too much on it, things end up being a bit forced, don't they? And a bit kind of scripted, even if it's a, a visual piece that you're looking at. Oh yeah, for sure. It's it's why I find it a bit. I don't know about you, but I can't. I'm still a big fan of like sketchbook and paper. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's easier to not 
literally get boxed in on the screen if you go with pen and paper first and sketch it out and then move it to whatever program that you want to use it in it's normally a lot easier mm. um, yeah definitely ooh. we've got a comment saying that your coloring is stunning I, I completely agree yeah Co color color is a, a strange one for me um i think i, I really have to give credit to my mom hey mom if you're watching <laughs> <laughs> um but i learned how to do this with kind of oil pastels and the, this is going to sound weird and maybe a little bit patronizing but i'm very sorry but oil pastels i swear down is the way to learn how to color mix because okay it's it's like the easiest way to understand if you do like a purple you can add blue to it you can add a little bit of yellow and see what happens to it and then mm. if you experiment and then transfer it to something digital like photoshop where you've got all of the colors in the world you know it's it's like kind of breaking you out of you know this must be blue and only blue and mm. i can add a bit of dark blue <laughs> mm -hmm. I guess also with um, with mixing from a from a physical space, when it comes to and you use a lot of gradients in your work, but when it comes to mixing digital gradients, you can have an understanding of what one end of the gradient is and what the other end is. But knowing what happens in the middle and when it comes to digital and with luminance as well and the way that the the pixels were sort of blend, sometimes things aren't very pretty. Um, and if if you haven't got that sort of uh, muscle memory and knowledge from, I guess, as you say, using um, oil pastels and, and other things, it, it may be a bit of a surprise. And you think, why why doesn't this look good? Why does it look a bit murky? Or, yeah, what's going on here? Um, yeah, exactly. It's, it's always good to try with traditional media. You might be, you know, you're not going to be the next Picasso, but it, it's good to kind of break you out of digital, I find. Um, it just makes your imagination go that bit further when you're yeah. in something as a limitless as as photoshop illustrator um so after kind of you know finding my feet with the more kind of pretty illustration um and kind of finding my voice and how i want to do my shapes and how i want to use my colors i kind of realized um the way that i draw is quite and this sounds obvious when i say it now but before I was, this is a real like light bulb for me, but the way that I draw is quite geometric and I use grids a lot. Mm -hmm. um, looking back now, people would be like, mm, duh. But for yeah. me, I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> um, so after that, I kind of figured out, I was like, wait, if it's geometric, maybe I can use like steel from graphic designers and use their grids and things and see where that leads me. Um, and see like, oh, can I create a composition using kind of grids and flat and play with perspective? And would it work like that? Mm. Um, so it's kind of a couple of examples of where I'm playing. You can kind of see like exactly where the grid is, which I think is the point. Um, yeah, definitely. And you can even see where it's where it's not. And you're, you're sort of playing with that space and, and the eye is sort of leading you into saying, you know, there could be something here, but you've intentionally not put something there. Um, yeah, not quite negative space, I guess, but in in a sort of other visual sense. And even here, where you're breaking uh, breaking the grid, and that's working brilliantly. Uh, we've got a, a question in the chat. If you start sketching directly on paper, um, or do you go more digital first, or you know, what's your approach there? Oh, always paper, because um, I find my mind gets super stuck on the screen. Because um, when I'm drawing a Photoshop, you you have a set canvas, right? And you kind of your your mind is already thinking, okay, I've got to stick to this, um, mm. which is really hard for me. So paper, I can kind of play it out. I can zoom it in, zoom it out, do thumbnails, and kind mm -hmm. of play around and be really artsy with tracing paper if the project's really getting under my skin. Um, and you can for me anyways iterate better when you want a big sketch pad mm -hmm. because you can get a bit um under pressure if you're mm. in the program uh, already tracing paper is uh was such a, a heartfelt discovery again as an adult it's something that i'd used a lot when i was younger and then i think i maybe went 10 15 years of just never never using tracing paper and then i um 
I was talking to some other illustrators, this was a couple of years back, and uh, they were showing me some things with tracing paper. I was like, oh, there's a there's a genuine commercial use for it. This isn't this isn't just fun for children. Um yeah, I'm I'm always so inspired by illustrators and and what comes out on paper and other things that I've heard from other illustrators. I don't know if you're the same, but do you find that sketching things really small to start with just helps really sort of build out what your your eventual piece is gonna be? Oh well, yeah. I think but sometimes I do forget that though, and I try and be really um ambitious and do it big and think why does this look absolutely horrible <laughs> and i'm spending about two hours on this one rough sketch <laughs> and then i think oh no 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 let's do thumbnails especially mm -hmm. because you can iterate and you have like a, a ton of tiny thumbnails and hopefully there should be one that jumps out on the page but yeah this is the one that's catching my eye out of all yeah. this other rubbish um, yeah definitely yeah. but and uh, that's, that's with cool. the uh Sorry, with the um, the grids, um, and you said you you sort of steal from uh, designers. Um, do you find yourself studying typography much? Does that inspire your work at all? Oh my gosh, I I love. <laughs> I'm a bit of a nerd. I love um, reading about type and type design. Mm -hmm. um, I think yeah, it's it's. I don't know about you, but when I was kind of coming up, there was always a sense of you know graphic design, graphic design, illustration, illustration, and we'll never meet in the middle. Mm. Um, but I think it's still still useful and really cool, I think, for creative thinking to get into the minds of, you know, some graphic designers, because graphic design is very, very, very conceptual. Um, mm. And understanding how graphic designers think and how they design their branding and what avenues they go down for research can really help out when you're on a extremely difficult job that you have no idea where yep. to start with so yeah definitely um and it's definitely working for you i mean you've uh, you've got some some fantastic work and you've got a style that is is sort of you know very uniquely you but equally being able to separate out from from brand to brand and uh different briefs and and things like that um when it comes to your personal work though what what inspires you or what do you find yourself sort of doodling and, and working towards? I think it's like what we said at the beginning. I think it's mainly what I'm feeling, kind of how, how am I feeling? What kind mm -hmm. of illustration do I want to, because when you're working, it's going to be four to five hours or two, three, five days. Mm. You kind of have to sit with, am I feeling... It's going to sound very arty, but am I feeling like a sunset? Am I feeling like an orangey, sad sunset? <laughs> or am I feeling kind of like bright blue skies? Mm. Um, or often I'll look at what holidays are going on, if it's Christmas, if it's Chinese New Year, if it's, I don't know, somebody's birthday that I can double up on making them a card. <laughs> yep. Also giving myself a bit of motivation. Um because that's that's a struggle, I think, if you're working um, when to find the time to do self-initiated. Mm. Because you yeah, can definitely. very well just sit and watch some Netflix. <laughs> yep. But yeah, um, I mean, I think that's a, that's such a common thing in the in the creative industry because, you know, I, I don't know the, the official stats on it, but I would wage a bet that the large majority of creatives they work independently and they work in freelance environments or essentially they're they're working for themselves via briefs from clients and commissions and things like that and so it can feel quite lonely and independent and you know you are the one who has to to pull out the work and uh if you can't find that inspiration and motivation it it shows um yeah it's definitely something i think everyone feels yeah definitely i mean I keep seeing these draw it in this style on Instagram. I don't always really want to join in and it's an excuse and I should just jump in and do it. Um, but there's never enough time. Mm -hmm. but there will be one day yeah. I will join. But I feel like those <laughs> are really good ways to kind of, because you're seeing someone draw the same thing in a different style. And I feel like that is like a huge kind of, whoa, I did not know you could draw it like that. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, so I believe we've got uh, some illustration 
demonstration things that you you want to share with us today? I think there might be some <laughs> eager viewers. Um, okay, so I will be demonstrating for you today. Uh, <laughs> I stole these from a kind of one of those stock free sites. Um, I often get asked on how I draw my animals and how I kind of use my gradients and my brushes and things like that. I think Shiba Inus are some of the happiest dogs around. <laughs> I, I would love to just have one just wandering about the flat, just, you know, happy and, and whatever. Uh, trouble is, I, in, a, in a usual year, I travel too often. It, it's not fair on the dog, but um, maybe a traveling dog. That would be fun. I mean, I feel like that would at least get you a free upgrade into first class. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that face. But yeah, apparently they can be quite stubborn, though, as a, as a species. Yeah, um, I guess stubborn or if, uh, you know, maybe they want to think that they're being loyal, loyal to their thoughts. <laughs> oh, okay. There you go. Um, so let me move this out of the way. So I thought I'd walk through the kind of simple processes because I I quite literally flatten my animals um, when I'm drawing them, mm -hmm. <laughs> which which is controversial because sometimes clients, you know, that there's a there's a dilemma between wanting like a real three D rendering of an animal or mm. you know the way that i do them which is really flat um so i'll show you a couple of tricks that i do with my brushes to kind of give that kind of round curve and that kind of mm -hmm. round bubbliness i'm doing this but you know they have yep. a really bouncy bouncy fluff <laughs> yeah i so, can see that you've got a uh, is that a wacom tablet you're yes. using a pen right yeah. yes that's that's a good i'm using um a wacom cintiq but oh nice i've got the the smaller more manageable version mm -hmm. i've got the i think it's like the 13 inch instead of the massive humongous I think it's one. 24 and i think even a 32 now um yeah they, they take I... up quite a footprint because it not only has it got width to it but there's also depth because it will angle flat right yeah i saw um on youtube there was someone reinforcing their desk because their cintiq and their kind of monitor was so heavy that they kind mm. of needed an extra bit of support before the desk caved in and I was like yep. <laughs> I might have to wait before I get myself one of those so this is a bit of a a cheat because normally when I do animals like this I'll sketch it on my sketchbook instead of dropping it instead of like sketching it straight into photoshop because I feel like the temptation is to trace the photo that you get Mm -hmm. The temptation is to like, oh yeah, I've got this photo right here, so I'm just gonna, you know, draw like that straight over it. Um, yeah. Which is which is fine if you're practicing, but you know, try and see if you can do it sketchbook to monitor, because you yeah. might get something a bit more fun. So I'm gonna if do. You're, if you're doing paper, would you ever like clip on a picture onto your like sketchbook or easel or something, um, and then compare with the picture? Um not i mean that's a really good idea actually joe i might still <laughs> um generally no i kind of do it and then i drop it into the screen and kind of compare it on screen i see yeah um and then if i'm like oh i was way off the mark there i'll kind of mm -hmm. do adjustments to my sketch in photoshop mm -hmm. um but no never on my sketchbook but i will yeah. try that next time yeah. <laughs> um so I'm going to do a bit of a, here's one I prepared earlier. Oh, no. There we go. So this is actually from my sketchbook. <laughs> um, so I kind of did an amalgamation of the two. I liked this little grumpy face that you've got here. And the yeah. shape of this one sitting is how I got this sketch right here. Um, I would love to draw a little happy Shiba, but I feel like it's a lot sassier. <laughs> yeah. If... Doing a little bit of frown. So normally this is the sketch. I just take it, dim down the opacity. And then grab some of my brushes. I've got a mix of, um, I don't know if you use Carl T. Webster brushes. Uh, 
Kyle's uh, a regular on Adobe Live um, and has probably one of the biggest large uh, libraries of brushes, I think, in the world. Gosh. It's, yeah. It's a, a legendary name when it comes to Photoshop brushes, I believe. Yeah, I was going to say, I was like, has anyone heard of this kind of unknown person <laughs> called <laughs> Master? <laughs> um, but yeah, I use a, I'd love to see or like be able to use his collection. I think, I don't know, you'd be there all day, wouldn't you? Mm. Um, but I use a collection, a uh, combination, sorry, of his brushes and Jin brushes. Mm-hmm. I think her name's like, her handle's like Jing Sketch brushes. Um, they're really good as well. So this this might kill some of you out there, but normally <laughs> I sketch in blue. Okay, interesting. Um, I, I find black disappears when you're adding color or um, when you have lots of colors. So I normally sketch in blue to help it stand out. And I just go over my sketches. Normally I might tweak at this point if I think the proportions are a bit wrong, but I think I think we're doing okay. But I kind of tidy it up and I'm always mesmerized watching illustrators at work. So it's, uh, it's something I've I've never really put a huge amount of practice in, so I'm I'm still fairly terrible. Um but every time I, I watch illustrators I'm I'm immensely inspired. I feel, I feel like everyone's always a lot more harsher on their own work because I feel like you're saying you're terrible, but if I see it, I'll cut off my gosh. <laughs> no, no, I'd be right. <laughs> 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 I think one of the biggest difficulties I have, um, especially on paper, is being left handed, is finding materials and um, sort of pens and, and media that doesn't smudge and just create a mess. Um, so I need to find techniques using like, I guess, paper overlaid. And I've heard that uh, hairspray is actually good for um, sort of setting your work as you're working. That's actually so true. It's, um, it was a, a, a budget way because actual setting spray is actually quite a lot of money uh, back in mm. the student life drawing days. So I used to use hairspray a lot because you you'd go through a lot if you're drawing. Mm. Um, hairspray is actually pretty good. Um, but I was wondering, what about sheets of paper? Because I know sketchbooks are absolutely horrendous for left-handed people. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah, with the, the ring bound. Um, yeah, I was always just on the, the left side of the book. Um, and then when you get halfway through, when the the padding ends up, or is it when you start off, there's one way that when you, uh, when you get partway through the book, it makes sense to turn the book upside down because then you, you're not like leaning down into it yeah i've seen it before and i was like oh you're a genius um <laughs> but yeah the i i have a thing about ring bound no no more we should stop mm-hmm. those sketchbooks please <laughs> yeah um so normally at this point all i've done is kind of turned off my actual original sketch and just to check mm-hmm. is my sketch kind of you know what i want it to be before i start coloring so then i turn it down um at this point, because I know that when I'm coloring, there's like white fur on the Sheba. So, so what I'm probably going to do is add a bit of like a background to it. So when I'm drawing, the white fur turns up on the screen. So I've okay. just chosen the pink, done a little blob, just to, so I know when I'm drawing the white fur will show up. And this point, we're probably going to have to decide what colors we're using. Um, and seeing as we're going pretty realistic, I'm going to eye drop a couple of shades from the stock photo. So definitely the golden brown. I think maybe, yeah. Because I was going to say to get color combinations, there's no, no harm in eye dropping from stock photos if you're drawing like landscapes and things normally Mm -hmm. the way i plan my color palettes is there'll be something in the photo that or in the illustration that has to be a sun color like the sea it has to be blue so you Mm. know okay blue 
what else goes with blue? Mm, do I want it to be really jarring? Should, should I go for a red? Yeah, and so yep. on. That's how I build them out. There. Just seeing we've got a uh, comment in the chat from Sandrine saying, uh, I can also use tracing paper to protect my left hand uh, from smudges, and I can still see it. So I think I know what I'm going to be um, ordering later today. It's uh, <laughs> a wad of tracing paper. Reignite that passion and, and fun. That's actually such a good point. I love how you're using Photoshop like a piece of paper. Like you're you're just adding your swatches and um, yeah, just really using it like a like a tool base um, to then work with and, and draw on top. Which I guess is how it's designed, but it's um, it's yeah. I guess it's it's new to me seeing it being used this way. I was gonna say that's actually really true. I mean, um, it's probably the way I work with traditional media. So if I was using Copic markers, it'd be mm -hmm. the same. Like I'd get my Copic marker, see if this is the shade for me. I mean, it doesn't look as nice as this and as mm -hmm. orderly. Um, but this is a. Uh, then I go in after I've eye dropped my shades, and you can see I've kind of done like dark lights and all the contrast so um this is a trick i learned from a beth morgan course um if you look her up on instagram she's a really good animator illustrator um if you do command u or control u on a windows pc mm -hmm. <laughs> you can actually kind of change this is probably not a great color to show up on but you can change your hues straight on so you can kind of go ah oh, maybe i don't want to use a gray maybe i want to use a lilac instead yeah. um, if you feel like there's something not quite working which is it changed the way i work to be honest um mm. but i'm just gonna make this actually probably a little less a little more pale Oh, pretty happy with those. And then it's on to our working times. So there's two ways that I generally, you can do this. I can either use, sometimes I use the pen tool. It depends on what the brief is, what look I'm going for. But sometimes I can use the pen tool to do the body of the shaper. Mm -hmm. I... Uh oh, <laughs> we might be having some uh, extra processing okay. power with the live stream. There we go. There we go. But um, okay. Let's let me do this so my my screen doesn't freeze again. But <laughs> when so it's one it's... of the one of the benefits of having so many tools is you've got a variety of options. So if you weren't using the pen tool, what other ways would you uh, would you go about this? So yeah, I would use this if I knew I needed to go back and change the shape. So I'd make this a live shape and put clipping masks on top. But because I don't want to be that um, meticulous with it today, I want it to have like that round fluffy feel. I'm going to use my uh, brush tool mm -hmm. for the whole thing. So, you know, you don't, <laughs> it's not going to be super careful. So I'm literally just going to color in doesn't matter if I go over my own lines because I just go back in with a mask and kind of tidy up my lines like this which kind of helps you not be so precious when you're mm. and you're using the same the same brush for your mask or have you changed brush in between Oh, same, same brush. Same brush. Okay. So you're matching up the textures. I guess that works. Yeah. Um, I mean, you, you could go back in with a, with a different brush, but I like this soft feathery look. Um, so, you know, that, that looks about right to me. And then I do all of my shapes first and then go and color, the, color them in instead of doing it one by one. So I'm just going to do the head now. And I see you like the approach of working on it independent, hiding your layer and then moving on to the next piece. Yes, it's true, actually. While we're here, thank you for reminding me, Drew. I'm just going to name them <laughs> because at some point, this is going to get very confusing. And I'm 
not going to know what anything is and you're going to have random layers like that mm -hmm. or like this okay that's my sketch there we go <laughs> um go back in and tidy it up And this is the the same swatch color, right? For we're doing with the head and the body. Yep. Um, yep. I will. I kind of do this just for speed because the color right now doesn't. It's not as. It's you can change it later. It's not as important. If you're like, mm -hmm. oh, actually, I want a blue sheba, you can yep. always go back in with a clipping mask and change the color, everything. But right now, it's kind of making sure all the shapes are right. That's the reason I turn the body off because otherwise you can't see why they connect. So I'll turn the body yep. off now while I do the tail. And I guess also having them individual layers gives you the flexibility to separate them out and add a bit more depth if you wanted to. And... Yeah, it's um, the way that I add depth is because you have the different layers. You can kind of force shadow mm. on a flat perspective. There we go. Okay, now I think we're on to the fun part. So if I start colouring the head of the Shiba, this is where my layers go a bit crazy because I'll use clipping masks, um, which are super handy actually for a, a number of things because you can change, you can go for if I wanted a shadow, but I didn't want to go into this dark, dark brown just yet. Like I just wanted like a subtle. There we go. Just pretending that the light source is coming kind of like from the left above there. Yeah. Go. And then I just, you know, add my layers. So now I'm like, okay, cool. That's, that's, that's looking good. Let's go for the little white beard that they have. Mm -hmm. That's looking a little bit gray. So I might go for her. Standard white. Okay. And you can see we're only on layer 31. <laughs> <laughs> Quickly builds up. I know. <laughs> but, oh, I'm yeah. loving seeing how this is coming to life because I'm already imagining how you'll then have flexibility to adjust like the opacity on things and blend them together. Yeah, it kind of, you kind of like do it layer by layer. And sometimes you're like, oh, no, that is not what I wanted. <laughs> but Control Z is like my best friend at this point. So I go back, do a little bit of shading. Okay. And then once I'm kind of happy, <laughs> the way I show that is I group it so I can't see it anymore. Yep. And then we move on to the body finally. And keeping in mind that the bow is going to be here. I'm going to go for a little multiply. And this is where you, you can kind of go wild is in the body of the animal, because obviously the head has to convey features. The mm -hmm. body, you can be a little bit more free and kind of play with the curves and, you know, really let the gradients do its job. So I know like the hind legs going to go there. So then if I make my brush this is where you can start to play with like the depth so you can if I do like a if I change my brush to one that doesn't have such a hard edge this is where you can add the shadows because I know that the head will be there the bow will be there mm -hmm. a little bit darker so like the sort of neck area I guess yeah and you can kind of add a couple bits for definition Just thinking with these, um, the layers and the way that you, you're grouping them and separating them out, you're you're on your way to setting them up for uh, animation. You're, you're giving yourself a head start if you keep these layers intact and if you want to explore into After Effects and things. Yeah, I guess so. Like, you know, if, if I wanted to, I could probably make its head nod. But mm -hmm. 
I think because I know what good animation looks like, my my she will be nodding like a little robot instead of fluidly <laughs> on how I want it to be. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, even just, you know, thinking of the mechanics and, and how something actually would work and move and things, um, and even just, you know, mentioning on where the light source is, it's thinking in a physical space that is elevating the eventual piece and, um, you know, it's having that physical nature of things. Yeah, I mean, just because it's it's kind of flat and the way you're thinking about it, you're flattening your 3D object doesn't mean you know you're you're not considering where the light is or i think you need to consider where the light is in order for it not to be kind of like a flat vector mm, yeah so let's stop fussing with that now and you know this is probably the time to kind of turn it on and off to see ignore the mess here because it will be tidy up by the bow mm -hmm. um cool and then let's just there we go. It's moving on to the tail palm. Ooh. That was definitely not the colour I wanted. I guess the whole process is is a continuous experiment, isn't it? I can see you're you're making strokes, undoing, trying it again, undo, and uh, that's probably one of the the biggest benefits of digital, right? And undo is there for a reason. It's... Yeah, I mean, it's almost um, like traditional art in a way, even though there's not an undo. But like this brush stroke, if I undo it, I won't be able to recreate the same one. Mm especially if I'm working with kind of the whole gradient look, sometimes I get a curve that I really like and I won't be able to get it back. Mm -hmm. um, which in a way is like if you were painting, um, which is sometimes annoying, but it's also kind of like the beauty of it. So because I've already, I did one, I did a Shiba earlier today to kind of test it out. And then I was freaking out like, what if the gradients in this one are better than my real life demo? Yep. Happy accidents and yeah, yeah. I that, that's I think one of the the most fun things about working creatively is that there is no right answer. There's no linear approach to things. Um, as much as you know, we want to set guides and grids and and you know add some element of control to it. At the end of it, there's no control. It's chaos. Exactly. But that's brilliant. <laughs> it, it it is. Um, if you if you learn to embrace it, I feel like I have yeah. to have yeah. Um, cool. So, I think that is almost, and that, oh, there we go. I kind of, I'm a bit impatient, so I like to do kind of all the base layers like this, and then I go back in and add detail, mm -hmm. um, just, just by the nature of how impatient I am. I like to see everything come together, and then I go back in and make yep. a couple of changes. So let's make it less creepy and give it some eyebrows. That's probably a good approach for working on client briefs because you're able to deliver things fast and then you can finesse and come back and, and sort of fine tune things rather than thinking, oh, I, I've just built a whole day's worth of, you know, doing the snout. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, normally um, I kind of do everything, do it everything probably in the first or, for first or second day. So I give mm -hmm. myself two or three days to kind of let it sink in. Cause I don't know about you, but when I finish a piece of work, I'm like, this is the most horrible thing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it, it, you definitely need time to sit with it. And, um, and you'll realize that, you know, you've maybe pushed things too far. Or you haven't gone far enough. Just yeah. fresh eyes, even you know, 20 minutes away. Um, I always think one of my one favorite things uh, that I learned from, uh, didn't learn directly from them, but heard about uh, at Disney Pixar, they have a, uh, a 20, I think it's a triple 20 rule. And it's something like every 20 minutes, spend 20 seconds looking at something 20 meters away. 
and it just helps keep your eyes and the muscles sort of um, engaged and get the blood flow going so that you continually are looking with a critical eye at your work. Um, yeah. So yeah, triple 20. I guess it would also fit in with a, a Pomodoro if you wanted to set on a, is that 25 minute timing? I think. Something like that. Yeah, I mean, I think it's like, yeah, probably 20 minutes, half an hour. Well, some people do crazy ones, like one hour and half an hour break. Mm. Like, oh, yeah. it's, it's a bit intense again. Um, <laughs> but that's such a, yeah, basically, that's, that's, that's the sentiment is to kind of step away from it. And actually you'll realize that you haven't done such a terrible job. Yeah. Or, you know, you can kind of see, actually, no, I have, but I can fix it. <laughs> I just want to mention one of my favorite things that I'm looking at right here is just the little tip on the uh, on the right ear, um, just the the nudge of color from <laughs> from, from behind. Yeah, I mean, then again, it's a happy accident. I I think I would be lying if I said I planned that all along. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> it's a comment in the chat with uh, Stuart. I use the eighty twenty rule. 80 minutes of thinking and 20 minutes of looking at the screen. <laughs> thinking time is good time. Yeah, I mean, if you thought about it well enough, that's probably all you need to take to actually do. Yeah, no, I mean, it's a, it's a classic case of, um, you know, responding to clients and, and they'll say, well, this took you, you know, 45 minutes. Why are we paying so much? That we are paying so much because it took me 10 years to learn how to do it in 45 minutes. Yeah, that's... That should be like the golden motto for. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, okay, and then I think we're ready to do the bow. Uh, this is where the absolute amazing choice of this can let's go from. Yeah, you know it's already candy pink. Let's go for even candy blue. <laughs> So it's just the same. See, I think if I was attempting this without having the experience of it, I probably would have overlooked the idea of using masks on it. And I would have attempted and attempted over and over again of trying to get the brush right first time. Um, but this has already inspired me on ways that I could approach things and uh, I'd even take in like some of the photography direction I would take on stuff and add adjustment layers and curves and sort of really yeah. mix all sort of uh, techniques and disciplines together. I think so. I mean, I think I started using masks after an animator told me that it's less destructive and you kind mm -hmm. of like, if you remove, if he removes them, then he gets more of the kind of more to play with yeah so I was like, mm, okay interesting and then i found out that you could do stuff like this instead of getting yep. like like you said trying to get it perfect every single time mm -hmm. so we're about i'd say 90 mm, better 85 percent finished so i'll turn off the sketch and then you can see it's kind of a little bit rough around some areas which is where i can kind of go back so say for example the head you see this bit's kind of like blurring into oblivion mm -hmm. And kind of go back and get the right brush kind of give it a little bit more definition again and sometimes like i've done here it hasn't made that much of a difference which means i need to go back in and kind of give it a little bit more shading and add little details that i missed before like the little ears which looks crazy. Um, do you have any control over rotating your brush at all? Do you do that with your Wacom? Do you, does that allow that? It does. Um, this is going to be one of those annoying answers where it comes with practice. So <laughs> once you've used a brush long enough and you've had enough like undo moments you kind of know where you want it and how it works 
there's mm. there's no like quick fix like oh if i turn it turn my hand this way it'll give yeah. me this great swell um mm. which no when uh, i was people... just thrown in one of his uh photoshop tips uh he can also use the arrow keys um i didn't know about that so that's a new one for me that's really that's cool rotate. um and then last but not least after i've done this i go in with kind of like a more texture brush so this set has so this is basically the same brush so you've got edge control grain and then smooth control and then these are just kind of different versions with more grain in them so yeah. this is how i kind of give a little bit more depth to my illustrations is i'd go in use my multiply trick again and just give it a little bit more not too much <laughs> just enough warmth and depth so you kind of like like a bit of makeup yeah <laughs> love that and you know it is still at the end of the day a fluffy animal so you want to give it you know, a little bit of fluff here and there a little bit of hair texture and you can even go into like your original mask kind of add a bit of so it's not such a clean line Mm -hmm. okay. same with the body i think the um even just the the geometry to it and the the sort of shape and it's kind of got like a a smooth sort of wispiness it blends it or lends itself well with the the blending that you've got of the um the brush strokes yeah it really sort of flows thank you i mean it's this it's kind of the abstraction is just kind of like going for the curves and exaggerating the curves because it works really well when you have got gradients to kind of curve it out and then you've got more space for the fade mm. is um generally how you get the look but i've realized that we've got about four minutes before the end so i'm gonna stop playing around with it but on, on, honestly you could probably go back in do a couple more um details do some highlights you mm -hmm. know adds like the bells and whistles <laughs> yep you did spend thing. hours and hours working on just the last five percent yeah you can just really get in there and make it feel like you want to squish its little face off um but yeah that's that's generally the way that you know the process and the layers and the grouping is how mm -hmm. i'd work even yep. if it was a small shiba or like a 200 layer landscape yeah oh yeah just thinking this is just one element of um you know what could be an overall forest scene of some sort and um you can quickly see how it adds up do you ever repeat things like do you do you have repeating backgrounds like you kind of take a tree and tweak it or do you always start from scratch um yes i i, I do try. i tweak this i tweak the trees um yeah i i do have a trick which is if you duplicate so say if i've got this bow and just so I don't know if there's any like sneaky art directors out there that are checking all the trees and see if they're the same. Mm. So I'd duplicate it and then <laughs> I'd use the skew tool. <laughs> yep. Just slightly skew it ever so slightly. And then because I've got layer masks or clipping masks, I can then change the colouring ever so slightly without having to redraw. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, if you have about 200 trees to draw, you're not going to sit there and draw them all. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you could even, I guess, use smart objects and then that way universal things such as the color could be changed just in a single instance. And yeah. then all of your skews and everything will, will be editable and, and transferable. Exactly. Um, yeah. yeah, it's all smoke and mirrors. Exactly. Or if you're drawing like a herd of deer, if you draw your deer with um, live shapes, you can... Mm -hmm tweak the curves of the deer ever so slightly so they're all right. you know the same but a bit different yeah helps yeah so this is uh this is looking great and i can imagine you could spend hours and hours continually tweak uh tweaking and coming back um if you were to to return to this what what sort of things would you um would you want to touch up on just realizing we're close to about time on this yeah wait if i group this one so this, this is one that I prepared earlier. 
um, this is the test. But as you can see, mm-hmm. it's it's the same thing, but it, the color palette's the same, but because mm-hmm. of the way the brushes work, it, it looks mm, yeah. completely different. Um, more pale but you can kind of see the contrast is a little bit higher there's more details there's more like shading and i still didn't remember to finish my bow <laughs> that's the same <laughs> yeah. um, but you can add like little details like little light spots and um a bit more shading you can play around with your layers kind of adding kind of highlights with the kind of if you put hard light and stuff it kind of gives you a bit more of a glow yeah you work with your background a little bit more and, and tweak things beyond yeah, that. Exactly. And the beauty Amazing. of this, yeah, you can kind of add your background as well because it's on a separate layer. Mm. This is this is highly fascinating and um incredibly inspiring for me. Uh this, yeah, I'm I'm definitely inspired to go and pick up a, a pencil, order some tracing paper, and um, you know, practice around. I'm gonna take your approach and do some hand sketching first. Um, and then I may uh, transition across. I don't have a Wacom tablet though, but I do have an iPad. So yeah. I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna try Photoshop on the iPad um, or some of the the other Adobe apps. Uh, and uh, yeah, try out some digital stuff. But the the idea of masking with your brushes, um, very simple technique. And I may be naive to think of uh, not applying the two together. I would have always tried to be a little bit more perfect with every brush stroke, but. Yeah, it's opened a lot of eyes for me. Um, very intrigued by this. Um, I'm so glad. Yeah, excellent stuff. Um, so thank you, thank you so much for for joining today. Just to uh, follow up on the rest of the week. So I believe on Wednesday, uh, we got a very fun stream coming up with uh, Tony, Maddie, and Tim uh, for some Photoshop tennis, I believe. Um, so this will be part two. Uh, I haven't actually caught the first one, so I may go and watch the replay of that. Uh, Tim tells me it was a it was a lot of fun. Uh, so Photoshop tennis coming up on Wednesday, and Friday we have the community hour with Tim and uh, Sean, I believe. Um, so yeah, that will be a fun one, discussing all things, and then uh, that will be wrapping the week up. We've started the week and we've wrapped it all up already. Um, so yeah, thank you, thank you very much. Um, this, uh, this has been a fantastic stream, uh, J.E., so thank you for joining us, and uh, we will catch you in a future one real soon. Thank you so much, Joe. Cheers all. Bye-bye. Bye.